Our first guest tonight is a heavyweight TV presenter and influential journalist. In his spare time, he enjoys listening to loud rock music and driving fast cars. But for me, he'll always be the best ever presenter of Newsnight. <laughs> Think you might be, be confusing him with Jeremy Paxman there, Hendy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the king of the road, Mr. Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> to thank you before we go any further on behalf of every bloke in the country thanks for coming back and doing top gear oh it's fun it was no, rubbish without you oh you are sweet no it was like tiff nadell very nice man he is a nice man but top gear is jeremy clarkson that's the law we've got a thing going him and me he's on I, I did a thing on top gear and i was sort of smirking i was driving along and i went yeah this car will do 200 miles an hour in fifth gear but in top gear <laughs> you know like big joke yeah and then a few weeks later he's on fifth gear on a little beehive channel app channel five he said that a car was noisy in fifth oh no, Top Gear was too long, but if you drop it down into fifth gear, it's much better. So we've got this little thing going now. So that's like a little private anorak. A little private anorak thing going. Nobody cares about, but it's nice for us. It keeps me entertained. I, I do. I actually think right that since the show's come back, and I don't mean to kiss your ass, because we'd Chardonnay on from Footballers' Wives last week, and I told her her show was great. Um, <laughs> but I genuinely think that your show is very good, and it's better since you've come back with the track and all that. I know. Sort of stuff. Do you want to come on? Because uh, we're trying to find people that come. We have this thing where we have a star, star in a, a reasonably, reasonably priced, priced car. car. Everybody comes on has a go. <laughs> and the really good thing is, is that Harry Enfield set a benchmark of slowness that can never be beaten. I saw it. It was pants. I've strolled round faster than he drove round. And Jonathan Ross was also rubbish. He was. Do you want to come and give it a go? Yeah. Uh, should Would I? You like do, to I see think it? is that something. <laughs> Okay, okay, fine. JK is the man to beat. You've got to and try so, and what beat. sort of car is it? It's a Suzuki Liana. It's rubbish. But it's £9,995, and that's a reasonable price for a four door saloon car. <laughs> I see what it is. You also raced Vickers against Priest. That was probably my favourite item on the track. Well, we had Vickers and Priests, and in the first one there were other religions too, but we couldn't get a Muslim. That's right. Which I felt was important. So we did it again over Christmas. And the Rasta one. Yeah, we got a Muslim and a Rasta, and a Seventh day Adventist who couldn't fit in the car. And um, this is true. It's Rasta. Kept off the grass, which was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it true that the priest actually came last because he stopped to pick an altar boy up, or is that just? <laughs> Tell me this much, right? On on Top Gear, you've got a cool wall. Who decides what's cool? Is it me. just you? Is me. it just you? Me, completely me. Because that's how cool is. You decided with that shirt, that's cool. Okay, you put it on. Well, Harry Hill probably did, but anyway, you. <laughs> Can, can, I just, can I just say, can I, look, th this is the man here who's stuck in 1987, for Christ's sake, okay? <laughs> you, you know, look, look, like stonewashed jeans went out with Nick They're Kamen. They're not stonewashed. They are stone They're not stonewashed. They're just jeans from a shop. Okay. Um, right, so, so. And this, actually, this is from that silly bloody woman thing. What's it called? What Not To Wear. What Not To and Wear. And these. And, yes, which was possibly the most unsuccessful makeover of all time on What Not To Wear. <laughs> No, because what I've done what is... What happened I've... there? Why did you go on that? Oh, three-line whip. Yeah? BBC people, you will... I wasn't doing anything. I said, you've got to go on it. And so I did. And then I've ended up with this kind of ER smock, frankly. <laughs> These shoes, which make me look homosexual. <laughs> and I tied them with the... What? <laughs> Do they? Well, I can't go to the Isle of Man in them. Put it like that. OK. And I've teamed them with old Jeremy, which is the jeans. That's what I'm saying. And then this jacket that I've just bought. Who, who do you like. style yourself on? That's what I want to know. Let's have a look. Okay, this is you. Okay, let's, this is a pic. Okay. Now, yeah. check the comparison out between this and this. <laughs> it's, it's the same man. Baywatch is finished. I've come back on Top Gear. What does that tell you? I don't know. It possibly tells We've us. We've never been in the same place at the same time. Damn it, it's you! <laughs> So you choose who's what, what is cool? Yeah, I do, because that's the whole... I think that's how cool happens, isn't it? I mean, these people go to fashion shows and mm. they go, that's cool. And it's one person, I think, who does it. There's not a debate. Top Gear is not a democracy. It's me. It's a dictatorship. It's a dictatorship, and I go, that, the Volkswagen Beetle is not cool. The end. OK. Um, Has anybody got any arguments with that? I, I, Anyways, I think it's quite a cute car. No, you're wrong. <laughs> 
Okay. Do you, you, you feel absolutely no, I'm looking into your eyes, you feel no responsibility at all for just saying, this is cool, this isn't, I'm the arbiter, I'm, you know, you shut down the Vauxhall plant in Luton. You I did not you shut did. it you down. Said, you, said the vector, you said the vector was rubbish, no one bought them, the plant shut down, thousands of people out of a job, your fault. <laughs> If I may leap to my own defence at this point, it was Vauxhall's fault for making such a rubbish car. <laughs> if they'd made a good car, I would have said, hey, it's a really good car. Thousands of people would have bought them. People in Luton would all have been very, very rich. Luton would have been a nice town, but it isn't. <laughs> it is, fair enough. What, what's a sexy car, then? What's a sexy car? Sexy there? car, there are only four at the moment. Mm. There's the old Land Rover, Renault Aventime... <laughs> Don't argue. Oh, not, there's, there's, a... there's farmers watching this show going, hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey baby, we're hip. <laughs> no, farmers' Land Rovers. You know, That's an old it. Land Rover. No, it's got to have the alloy wheels and it's got to have that sort of roll cage on the outside. So a, a proper Land Rover Defender. Okay. Then you've got to have Renault Aventime. It's a rubbish car, but it's very cool. Aston Martin Vanquish, dreadful car, but cool. And a Mini, it's a good car and cool. So I'm actually looking to change my car mm. at the minute. Mini. A Mini. Yeah. You Do you think? want a mini? No. Who, no. Well, you, why not? Because I kind of think it, it, it sort of smells a bit of hairdressery. <laughs> Do you know what I think? It's a chick's car. The worst thing about I'm, the I'm mini... I'm looking for something, right, that, mm. that, that will pull the ladies, but doesn't say hairdresser, yet doesn't go to sort of the Ferrari, because, you know, Ferraris are driven by tossers. Do you know what I think? Oh, without a doubt. You know, I sold mine six months ago. <laughs> I quite agree with you. I don't know what well, you're going to tell me how she's going to spend, because I'm going to say Ford Fiesta now, XR2, 300 quid. <laughs> Does that the type of guy I look to you? No, <laughs> you've not given me a budget, Aston Martin, DB7. How much is that? 90,000. Let's go back to the Fiesta. <laughs> or do you want to go somewhere in between the two? That I think somewhere between 300 quid and 90 grand was the price. BMW, BMW M3? I can't, no, no. M3? They are, aren't they? Yeah, nobody lets you out of side turnings in BMWs. It's very true. See, I have had BMWs and I thought, I'm going to die here. <laughs> you just wait and people pull their headscarves a little bit further, I don't even see you. I don't, you wouldn't let me in, which is true in a BMW. It is, it is that it. thing, though, the way that vision just completely goes when someone's coming out of a side. I'd love to let you out, I'd love to let you out, but I can't see you. I just <laughs> can't see you. I and mean, actually, in a BMW, they pull it back and look at you going, you've never let me out. I'm not going to let you out. That's how it works. Actually, no, you're right. Not a BMW. I don't know what... I don't know, because I don't know what you want. Well, I'm from Belfast. You're a single What about man. A, a DeLorean? What do you think? Uh, do you know, I never drove one. It really? Was before I, was, I don't think I was a, a, a motoring writer in those days. I don't think I drove one. I mean, it was stainless steel, wasn't it? It had a Renault engine and mm. Lotus bits and bobs. I'm sure it's jolly nice. Uh, uh, apparently, it was a bit rubbish. Was it? Apparently so. Well, in, in Belfast, we don't really have a heritage of building things that work. The thing is... <laughs> the last thing we built went down with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet <laughs> hanging off the back of it. <laughs> and what about that ending? Why did she throw the jewel in? Oh, at the end, the old dear. Why did they, I mean, why do the Americans do that? Every single film finishes, OK, he drowns, the end, leave the cinema. Ooh, oh, that's it. Why do we have the old lady dropping the jewel? It wouldn't do that. You wouldn't throw a jewel worth £28 trillion in the sea. And the Americans always end a film and then 15 minutes of treacle. Maybe it's because Americans are stupid. Well, they are. They are. <laughs> they are. They were saying that they were going to go after thingy. Osama, Osama bin, bin Laden. Laden. Yes. What happened to that? Apparently he doesn't sell oil. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> Now, it does worry me, though, because if you think about it, they had all of those troops going out there, but they couldn't even get that gunman out of the... with no hostage, out of that thing in East London. <laughs> How are they going to get Saddam if they can't get one gunman out of a flat? I think I heard you make that point last night in Question Time. That was very good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making it again on Sunday in the Sunday Times. It, it's very nice paper. Good. I, I read your column all the time, especially the bit with you and A.A. Gill when you swan off to various places. A.A. Gill, yeah. Talented man. Nobody knows who he is. He, he's very Great talented man. Yeah, very talented. He brought you to Greece there about a month ago. He did. We went off to Mykonos because he suspected he might be gay. So he said he How wanted to How do you suspect go. you might he be? He thought he might be gay, so he cut all the sleeves off his T-shirt borrowed his girlfriend's white linen trousers and we went to Mykonos to find out whether he was gay or not. And did you find out? It was amazing. This really? is a gay resort. Honestly, we went at one point down to this place called Super Paradise Beach. Do you know it? 
<laughs> been there once or twice? Well, at one end of it, there's all these gay men, and they're all naked. And then Sorry, beyond... I don't know that one. <laughs> okay, beyond there, on the headland, they're really, really naked. Apart from motorcycle boots. So, is... so what's the difference between naked and really, really naked? Well, they're naked and tumescent in motorcycle boots down at one end of the headland. No, really. Because if you think of all the things you pack for a beach, I've got the sun cream, I've got the towel, and I've got my motorcycle boots. <laughs> and they go down there, and Adrian walked down to find out whether he was gay or not. This bloke just stood, and I'm trying to think of the word that I can use, masturbated <laughs> at him. And How do you decide... masturbate at someone? Well, <laughs> I need it to be there. But you need to have quite a range. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was basically what happened. And uh, Adrian decided he wasn't gay and we came home. <laughs> <laughs> Which was nice to have him back. But it was fun. No, we do. We have good fun, actually. We go off to just places in the world and, and write about them. Um, settle this argument. Me and my kid brother were fighting about this last night. The Kate Moss story, did it happen or did it not? Nearly. Yep. This would be the Kate Moss story when I was introduced to her as being from Top Gear and she said she didn't want any drugs. <laughs> yes. That now that made yes, that's the one we're talking about. Please tell me she wasn't that stupid. No, but somebody sitting next to her was. Black guy, gold teeth. <laughs> Rapper? Yeah. Big brother house? Yeah. There we go. I mean I'm not saying names, I don't want to get him in, you know, people to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't dream of revealing who that is. Yeah. Can you guess? <laughs> No, it wasn't her, but it was in the sun the next day, and that was a good enough story for me. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Journalist's first mentor. <laughs> so tell me, when's the show coming back? Top Gear will be back in the spring. OK, and are you going to have me on? I, you've, you've already said you're coming on. Okay. You are coming on. I want to see if you're slower than Harry Enfield. OK. Uh, it's not possible, but we'll see if, you know... All right, I goes. look forward to that. Uh, look, thanks for coming over. Give it up one more time for Mr Jeremy Clarkson!